Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another fabulous Monday Night Magic with your favorite epigenetic geeks, my amazing friend, Ken Close, and myself, Lori Falk. We are absolutely thrilled to be here with you to launch the new year in style, and tonight we're going to talk about intentionally creating a year filled with joy. Wow, doesn't that sound wonderful, just in and of itself? intentionally creating a year filled with joy. So we're going to tell you some great, exciting ways to do that. And we're going to tell you that maybe you might have to work at it a little bit. So, but that's okay because nothing ventured, nothing gained. And it's worth it. If it's going to bring us joy, it's worth it. I promise you. I set an intention two and a half decades ago to manifest joy and I had the most amazing six months of my life the stuff that just started appearing so my intention is kind of like that again and right behind that Christmas tree is what I manifested I manifested a Christmas gift a Christmas gift for myself a free 48 inch tv <laughs> the lobby of my condo and lo and behold there was sitting on the floor, this beautiful TV with a sign that said free TV. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so, you know, I started doing this work in September and they say it takes about 90 days to really start seeing the impact in your life. Well, I think I'm just encouraging you all to start doing this because magic can and will occur how about that ken what do you think i love it i love it and you know we we look at things um as being magic and i love that word because um it, it's it feels super um natural right supernatural and and yet i live in the science world i live in the um the world of um analysis <laughs> and and i think maybe you guys have probably heard the term before um, with too much analysis becomes paralysis, right? We get stuck in the muck of analyzing and not really ever uh, engaging or doing. And, um, and, and there is a test I took uh, about eight years ago to find out um, a mind's operating system, analytical or creative. And if we understand from the, uh, the divine creator, our divine intelligence um, when we're trying to manifest anything, it doesn't come from analytics. It does not come from the analytical engine within our brain. It doesn't come from there. It, it literally comes from the creative side of us. And so the more analytical we are, the less creative we are. This is an inverse proportion in neuroscience. This is just what science discovered. The more analytical we are, the less creative we are because we're we're staying in the known. We're staying in the known. We What we see with our senses, what we believe with our um, our intelligence is all there is. But again, we know a lot about the non-physical, right? And so manifestation comes from setting clear intentions and remaining open to receive without analyzing. Because how many times have you, have you ever um, been a, a door is open for you that didn't look like the things that you wanted or the thing you were trying to create? And yet when you walk through that door, it led you right to the next portal, which got you what you wanted, right? It's, it's if, if we were to look back on our entire life, just even look back on this today, had one little piece shifted by one degree, it would have been a completely different day, right? A completely different day. <laughs> this is just what happens. And so if we didn't walk through a specific door, an opportunity um, that knocked, you know, when there's a knocking on the door, we open it. If we didn't do that, then there would have been a lot of variations um, in our lives. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight about um, uh, what I like to say, well, some questions. I'm going to, we're going to ask some questions and I'm going to give you some tangible answers. They're going to, they're going to be um, physical, physical, tangible, um, analytical type answers. However, they're going to they're going to sway and lead the body into a different place because it allows the body to be creative all right it's it's my little biohack <laughs> it's it's like um as an engineer um 
I, I took this test, like I said, about eight years ago, and it revealed that I was 68% analytical. 68% analytical. Now, I, I wasn't surprised. A, I'm masculine, right? It's like men tend to be a little more analytical. I, I admit it. And two, uh, an engineer. An engineer, right? Well, we got we got the we have the facts, man. That's it. We got the facts, and we make it happen that way. Um, and then I started my journey down the road of Dr. Joe's work, right? Dr. Joe Dispenza. And a lot of you guys know that person. Um, and five years in, I took that test again. It was exactly the opposite. <laughs> really? <laughs> exactly the opposite. Wow. Yep. I'd shift this way of being out of the analytics. Now, doesn't mean I don't have that engine still there that I can fire it up and run it all day if I want. But what I learned was how to manifest, how to create things, um, essentially what seems like by magic or out of thin air, like Lori's television right there. I love your story. We were talking about that today. And what'd you do after you got that TV? How'd you pay it forward? Oh, I took a smaller TV that I wasn't using that was just sitting in my closet and I put it down in the lobby with the same sign on it and it was gone in an hour. And that brought me so much joy to know that somebody could use this little TV that was, I mean, it wasn't that little, but you know, it, when you think of 72 inch TVs are the norm these days, it was probably a 24 inch. So anyway, it just made me so happy. And then from that happiness, what do we do that puts us in a higher vibe, higher mm -hmm. vibrational state, enabling us to attract more things at that level? And we're talking about, a lot about that tonight, you guys. You've got to get into the space of how you're going to feel when you have what it is you're wanting to create in your life this year. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's, there's the, the universal laws. Um if you practice and study universal law, the universal law of compensation, like compensating having a 72 inch television, it doesn't say anything about dollars. It doesn't say anything about money. It doesn't say anything about intelligence. It doesn't say anything about how strong you are, whether you're man or female. It says the universal law of compensation says you are compensated to the extent of your service. That's it. So, by giving back, by giving back, you know, by serving the world in a certain way and then giving back, right, um, in some fashion. Lori gave back and guess what? Somebody else is just happy now because they got this television for free, right? And so um, it's the same. It's it, The key thing about that is the same vibrational state that Lori got by receiving this larger TV is the same vibrational state that the other person got by gaining this, the other TV, right? It's the same frequency. And both Lori and this other person, we don't know who it is, are amplifying the signal. They're amplifying the signal of gratitude, of joy, of abundance, right? Simply put, they're amplifying the signal. And the more people that do that on a regular basis, that amplified signal is, is radiating omnidirectionally. And the moment that any one of us decides that we want to feel grateful or we want to feel abundant, and we feel it in our bodies, all of that that's been built out there, the amplified signal increases our energy. So there's a there's a concept in, uh, in dynamics, in physics called um, destructive interference and constructive interference. Constructive interference is what we would call in the Healy world coherence, right? The program coherence, we're coherent with someone else or we're coherent with a thought um, or a frequency is matching um, another person and they amplify each other. So constructive interference is when two interfering patterns are constructive to each other, right? They're in, in wavelength um, match and they amplify. Destructive interference is exactly the opposite. When there's two frequencies that are opposite and when they bombard each other, they cancel, all right? That's just physics. And these bodies of ours, um, we can at any time, well, not we can at any time, we do in every single moment connect to some frequency. We connect to some frequency um, and that frequency is dependent upon two things. One, the thoughts in the brain. Two, the chemistry and the feeling of the body. 
Those two things create this electromagnetic signal that transmits out and it amplifies other people of like and kind, of like and kind. And then others are amplifying us of similar like and kind. And so if we're trying to build these bodies um, in some different fashion, right? Something that you want, something that you desire, whatever it is that you want to change. And that's what we're going to talk about. What I would like you guys to think about right now is just, I don't know, maybe you've made some New Year's resolutions. Maybe you've decided that we're early on in 2024. I'm going to make some changes in my life. And you've written something down. I want you, if you haven't, that's okay. I would like for you to maybe adjust something down. It doesn't have to be big, just something, or you can even put it in the chat, whatever you want. Just, I want you guys to think about what is it that you want to change about you, okay? Something that you want to change about you. And I, and I don't mean, I know, we may have a partner, we may have family members, and I want to change something about them, right? Well, you know, we can't do that. We can't change something about them. So we want to make sure that this is about something about changing about us. Um, and note that down because we're going to use that information as we build intentions and as we build this model around this new self and you don't have to publish it in the in the chat if you want to you can that's great uh, but definitely help us out and write something down for for us because what you want to change um has a blueprint to achieve it that's got a blueprint it has got a map um, a very distinct map and um if you do some of these things um, if you follow that map, what happens if you follow a map uh, from the West Coast to the East Coast? You have a destination on the East Coast. As long as you're following a map, you probably will get there. Let's say you're cruising across the Atlantic Ocean. You know, there's no roads, but you've got a trajectory uh, and you wind up getting to your port. If you change anything about that trajectory um, or something on the map is incorrect, guess what? You don't wind up at your destination, do you? So... So we're going to show you a map, um, how to get to this destination. And the, the vessel that we're going to use to get there is this body. It's this body, right? Um, we need it to be in, in proper form. Um, Lori and I were talking about this vessel and finding appreciation for it every day. Uh, how many of you guys find appreciation for your body every day? Give it thanks. Give it appreciation. Give it gratitude. Give it love, Right. Because it's this vessel, it is this vessel that's going to get you from the moment you wake up all the way through your day to you. it's time to rest it. And that's called a, a circadian rhythm, wherever you are. From the time the sun comes up, the time the sun goes down, there's a circadian rhythm that you are in cadence with. Um, it, so, so the next thing is um, if, if we're going to create these changes, um, we want to talk a little bit about um, there's a area in your brain. It's, it is um, science is starting to get a little, um, get very curious about this part of the brain. Um, some of the things that are being discovered about it um, and how it works, what its purpose is, um, kind of where it's located. Um, this kind of stuff, it's, it's, um, there's a, we have a picture here to show you. It's called the anterior cingulate cortex. It's a, a little tubular section right behind the frontal lobe. Um, of course, the frontal lobe is the seat of our awareness. Um, it is the analytical engine. It is the orchestrator, um, over everything. It is the crowning achievement of humanity. <laughs> it's this frontal lobe. Also, I might add, one of our nemesis when it comes to change. Um, it's definitely the analytical part that keeps us sometimes separate from what we want. But the anterior cingulate cortex, this piece right here, is a part of the brain that neuroscience is now discovering actually grows, gets bigger, when we find something we don't want to do, but do it anyway. When we bump up against something we don't want to do, but do it anyway, this part of the brain grows, gets bigger. 
And I want to tell you why that's significant. It's because this, this part of the brain has been discovered to be contributory to our will, our willpower, right? How many of you guys, if there's something you don't want to do, what do you think it takes to get there, right? <laughs> that, that willpower, right, to get, to get beyond some limiting belief or to get through some um, physical barrier, whatever it is. And who knows out there, if you're familiar with the chakras and the energy centers, where does the will live within the body as far as the chakra centers? right? Solar plexus, yeah? Solar plexus right here. And the solar plexus is one of the uh, parts of our body that we use to breathe, right? What's that diaphragm do? Right? Fills our lungs, right? That's part of our breath work right there, the willpower. <laughs> and, and so this part of the brain that we're talking about, the ACC for short, um, it's not only it not only gets bigger when we lean in and actually do something that we do not want to do. It also um, is what is now being discovered as part of our will to live. Part of our will to live. People with uh, that part of their brain that is super big live longer. <laughs> they live longer, right? Well, that makes sense. That makes sense because they have leaned in and done things they didn't want to do, right? And every time we lean in and do something we don't want to do, that's in what we would call the unknown. That's an area, and when you're working with Dr. Joe, you get real familiar with living in the unknown. <laughs> you get very familiar, and you wind up actually spending a lot of time there. And even um, Simon Sinek talks about um, the, the circle – uh, where the unknown being kind of the larger area of our shifts and changes in our lives. Um, and and now when we're talking about change, is it, if you knew how to do this change that you guys wrote down, if you understood all the pieces, don't you think you might be there already? <laughs> all right. If there's something you wanted to change but haven't, is it because you already know how to do it? Is it because you've already got the experience? Probably not. It doesn't mean you don't know how. You just haven't done the things to get there. All right. So whatever it is that you want to change, it's probably something in the unknown. And so the better we get at navigating these changes and stepping in, leaning in, moving forward, we start to grow that part of the brain, the ACC, that actually it helps us do it better the next time. So we're going to go through some things um, to help you lean in. Uh, and by the end of the night, you're going to like probably slap me a bit. Oh, um, yes. But... I promise. They will. <laughs> um, but I want you to understand, we're going to get, I'm going to throw out some science here, some understanding, because information leads to transformation. If you If you are informed about what you're doing and why, right, the how becomes clear. It's like you you don't know how to get there. Well, let's let's build some principles, a blueprint, a map, and now you become a little more clear, even though you haven't done it before. Okay, so I just thought that part of the brain was just just fabulous. Um, and as you know, you've probably heard me say this before. If you've been on any of the calls, I talk about how these bodies restructure to the tune of 800,000 cells per second. Anybody ever heard me say that before? <laughs> I say it often because why? Because you're not stagnant. <laughs> you're not stagnant. I don't care if you're sitting there, if you're sleeping, if you're doing nothing, your, your body is not stagnant. And we need to really take pride in these vessels because to the tune of 800,000 cells per second, you're being recreated. Now, we have 84,400 seconds in a circadian rhythm. One day, 24 hours, 84,400 seconds in one day. We're turning over to the tune of 800,000 cells per second. Now, do the math. That's over 69 billion cells a day. Wow, that's a lot, right? That's a lot. However, there's... 
a hundred trillion cells in your body. <laughs> so that's actually um, in one day, a very small influence. And how many of you guys have heard that it takes 21 days to change a habit, right? You've heard maybe something like that. Okay. So here's what you get. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of stir this up a bit. <laughs> I'm jumping into the bees nest. Here we go. Um, 21 days to change a habit that what that means is you can you can perform certain functions in your mind and shift beliefs perceptions and concepts but behavior is influenced by the body the vessel in which we navigate this wor world is the nuts and bolts the tangible 800,000 cells per second body okay making sense so far so if we took this body and we we taught it something new uh, every time you learn something new you get an aha moment you learn a new thing a new concept new understanding you build 2400 neurological um, synaptic connections in the brain 2400 every time you learn something new that's a lot right but if you don't rehearse it within 24 hours you've lost half that how many of you guys, have you ever learned how to do something? You know, you're like, that was great. I love it. You go home, you do nothing with it the next day. On day three, you go, what What Ken say? How did you do that again? I forgot <laughs> because that's day three. You didn't rehearse it the next day. So 1,200, well, you know, 1,200 synaptic connections just unpruned, disconnected from that information highway that you created. And the reason is because the brain only wants to be efficient. It has to. The brain is only 3% of your entire body mass, but it consumes over 20% of your entire energy for the day. So that's a, that's a lot of consumption. The brain is, is an is a energy-hungry engine, but it needs to be because it does a lot. So if you don't rehearse something, the brain is going to say, well, you're not using those synaptic connections because you, I see you. You know, don't, don't think you can fool your brain. Sorry. It sees you. It says, you're not doing what he asked you to do. You don't, you're not trying to remember that stuff. So he's like, I, I'm taking this. I'm putting it over here, right? And so those synaptic connections get what we call synaptic pruning, disconnects, and now they're used somewhere else. Okay, so this concept of learning new behavior in 21 days, if you don't rehearse it, or if you only do it sometimes, then it's not going to be a very tangible behavior pattern because the body is to the tune of 800,000 cells per second using your information, your beliefs, perceptions, understandings in your brain to build cell structures to match. Okay. You follow me? So the body becomes a, a vessel of the mind, right? It, the mind essentially is the consciousness. My cuckoo clock is saying, you're cuckoo. You're cuckoo. <laughs> the, my, the, the body, not, it is cuckoo. Right? It's like 800,000 cells. Neither per of you are cuckoo. <laughs> 800,000 cells per second becoming this tangible body, but being influenced by this mind, this mind that is the filtering mechanism between the quantum blueprint of you, which is perfect, and the tangible physical being of you, which is a sl slightly skewed from perfect. I mean, I'm not saying you're not perfect. I'm just saying you're just maybe a little bit over this side of perfect, <laughs> right? This is, I mean, if you if you were in this, if you were completely perfect, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't have written anything down when I said, do you want to change something? I mean, did anybody not write something down? Does anybody not want some want to change something about their life? Anybody? I I'm always. I'm always changing stuff. So, um, so the, the point here is, is that um, these minds take the blueprint, filter it through consciousness into a tangible body to that tune of 800,000 cells per second. And it takes a while for the body to become a new version of itself. And we're not, we are not composed of what we do sometimes. We are composed of what we do most of the time. And I like to use the 80-20 rule, right? 80% of the time, I'm diligent about creating something I truly desire. 
20 per, 20% of the time, I don't give a crap. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to have a cheat day. I'm going to have a, whatever, you know, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to, I'm going to maybe investigate some off the wall phenomenon, whatever. But the 80, 20 rule means that we are a, a being of what we do most of the time. So 80% of the time, same thing when it comes to building this body. All right. So um, if we dive into number two, so number one is we're asking the question of what do you want to change? Number two is what things uh, do we need to do differently most of the time? What do we need to do differently most of the time? I want you to ask, write that question down because you're going to need to answer these things. True change comes from knowing what you want and knowing what you don't want. So you need to know both so that you can catch yourself when you're doing the crap that you don't want. How many times do you notice in the day, all of a sudden you have these thoughts and thoughts and thoughts around something you don't even want, right? It's this behavior pattern in the brain. I, dang, I didn't want to think that way. I didn't want to be angry all the time. I didn't want to be this. I didn't want to be that. So whatever it is you want to change, the next thing is we want to make sure that we know um, what will we do differently most of the time, 80% of the time. Exactly. Because there's another 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of this change is an inside job. <laughs> I mean, we're giving you ideas and a blueprint of how to create this change, but it's an inside job. Everything we're going to tell you to do requires you to get a mindset shift and to make changes in your life. And it's not about... I didn't like go down to that lobby and intend to find a TV. In fact, I don't even like go shopping for TVs. I don't watch TV that much, but it was a manifestation that just appeared out of thin air to show me that the work I was doing was working, that it was actually happening. What I didn't tell you earlier today, Ken, is that is, not the first TV I've manifested. It's the fifth TV <laughs> in 20 years that I've manifested. That's just that's just craziness, right? That's, I love I it. I have no idea how my hand got up. <laughs> that's crazy. I love oh, it. I love it. Well, see, she's like, I, I, you know, I'm putting I my raised hand my hands and the hand went up. I'm so, putting my hand up. I'm in for change. We are so magical that I was like this and the computer raised the hand. Oh my goodness. So you, you just got to know that it's 80% an inside job. And honestly, yes, John, magical high five for sure. For sure. So it, it, it really is. You're going to have to do the work. There's just no getting around it. If you want to create these changes, you're going to have to be diligent. You're going to have to do the work because 90 to 98 percent of the time we as humans are making decisions and reacting based upon subconscious programs so if you want to counter that you're going to have to say super conscious and super aware of what you're doing what you're thinking how you're feeling those three things so important so very important and i got news for you I know you guys have all heard can be introduced as an epigeneer. If you read his bio, it says he's an epigeneer. He actually coined that term. Yeah. But you know what he told me today? Mm -hmm. The truth is we're all epigeneers. Mm -hmm. So we're asking you guys in the next 30 days to really get in there and realize you're an epigeneer and it's your turn to do that inner work. This is why we're talking about the blueprint. This is why we're talking about um, genetic expression. This is why um, we're 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 working these formulas, this this map, right? Um, and and it's it's I I, I love um, Connie's remark here is like if you don't follow the map, you're going to get the message recalculating, <laughs> right? Which which is true. Because, uh, you know, if you're if you're using your GPS system and you take a wrong term, it's like recalculating, recalculating. And so we do this, too. And this is the brilliance and the beauty of epigenetics is that we can take the body 
out of Wisconsin and put it in Hawaii, hanging out uh, with Laura on the beach. And, and within a very short period of time, it's going to be recalculating, <laughs> right? Because it's cold in Wisconsin right now. It's cold where I'm at right now. And you go to somewhere warm, it takes a little bit of um, recalibrating. It, you could feel a shift. You know, you might like the warmth, but it's like, whew, it's kind of hot in here. And Laura might be saying, wait a minute, this is one of our colder days, right? And so you, the, the perception of the body that's got the, its butt in the seat uh, is really um, going to be based on the environment. So, so 97% of that genetic code is triggered by the environment. 800,000 cells per second. 3% of the genetic code for each one of those cells is fixed. 3%. It's going to be a bone cell, a muscle cell, a skin cell. 97% of that genetic code is adaptive. Adaptive. Reading the environment. And understand that the, that the cell, the external environment of the cell is the internal environment of the body. Okay? The internal environment of the body. And there is an energy field inside your body, like Laura said. Laura said that 80% is an inside job, right? Mm -hmm. So you create a state of feeling inside these bodies by your emotions. And those emotions are generated by your thoughts. So they both thought and emotion has an influence on that cell expression. 97% of the genetic code is reading your emotions and your thoughts so that the cell can build a body that adapts to its environment. Bring Lori out of Wisconsin, put her in Hawaii. Her body's like, you know, she's got this perception, this, this emotion, these feelings in her body. She's got the thoughts about it, the, the, the judgments, the love, the appreciation, whatever it is. And the body's going, yep, I can be all that. And so 800,000 cells per second start to produce a body to fit. It just fits. So let's say that we take a body out and we put it in a hostile environment. We put it in a violent environment. We put it in a unworthy environment. Remember what happens. The environment signals the gene and the body becomes a signature of that environment. Now, don't let that be a sentence. Don't let it be a, a, um, a an end all, okay? Don't let it be your story because what we're gonna talk about also is how you can hack your environment, okay? Um, so we wanna make sure that we are continuing to hold on to an intention um, of whatever our change is. My suggestion is that when you've written down what you want to change, and then you write down um, what you're going to do differently, because we need to have a map. We need to write some of these things down. If let's say that you want to, um, I don't know, one of the, what, you want to know what the leading change that humans on our planet are trying to achieve, weight management. <laughs> I, I, I work with a lot of people. And when I say weight management, I'm not talking about just weight loss. Some people want to add weight. Some people want to build muscle. It's, it's weight management, or I should say composition management. Um, and so people want to change something about themselves. And that's it has to do with the physical. And so you, the next piece you need to know is, well, what about me do I want to change? What do I want? What's my picture? And then you live it. You, you really have to build enough, a clear enough picture that in your mind, you can, aside from all your sensory inputs, and this is where I coined the phrase, you got to make shit up, okay? Um, you, you've, you've, aside from your sensory input, if you have to get rid of all the mirrors in your house, I don't care. Whatever it takes. You, you've got to build a model of who you are ahead of the event. Ahead of the event. This is key. You have to build a model of who you are, not who you want, who you are ahead of the event. Because if we continuously look at what we want, we will stay in a state of not having. 
I want you to understand this for a minute. Dig into this for a second. Let this settle on you. Try it on like a new shirt, like a new suit. I want you to try it on. If we stay in a state of want, we will be in a state of not having. You've got to create a self that you have right now. And you build the model, what it looks like, feels like, tastes like, walks like, dresses like, interacts like, all of that. The better you get at that, the better you get at writing that model down and then discounting the sensory inputs. Here's the biohack. You've got to discount the sensory inputs. How many of you guys, well, probably nobody here, but maybe you know somebody that looks in the mirror and goes, oh, God, I don't like that. Ew. You know, I, I know none of you guys is like, oh, my hair is, oh, I wish it was that. Oh, jeez. Oh, your hair. Yeah. I, know. I, I love my hair. It's like, woohoo. It's my favorite hair. It's so low maintenance. Um, But the point is, is like when we are looking at very specific things and we're judging, we're hating on it, we're dissing on it, you know, all these pieces we have you have to understand that there is a reticular activating system a a a concept of us that is building us and that concept is built made up in the mind and believe me the body does not know the difference between something you make up in your mind or something you experience in the three dimensional space the body will just become it why because of the 97% of the adaptive portion of the gene <laughs> It's just going to become what you believe, what you perceive, what you think, and what you feel. So a big part of manifestation or creation ahead of the event is to feel it, know it, love it, dress like it, talk with it, take it out to dinner, romance it, court it, just love on it. <laughs> this part of you that you want to change. All right, so that's the big that's a big one. Practice doing things that you that you don't like because you're building that part of the brain, right? I promise you if you're in a state of being right now and it's not what you want, then you haven't been doing the things because you don't want to do them. <laughs> I mean, I just I just don't want to do the work to make me what I want to be. Okay. Well, then you're not going to get what you want. <laughs> so it's pretty simple. Um, and I'm going to put some bigger things down here on the table in a second. That's really going to challenge your do or don't want. All right. So this creating the will to live by, by enlarging that part of the brain, the ACC part of the brain um, is, is the, is one of the biggest answers. And, and neuroscience is now starting to unpack that a lot. I imagine you now that we've talked about this, you're probably going to see it all over the place, right? And they're like, oh my God, Ken was just talking about that. Um, and so you, it's going to be more and more prevalent uh, because because when we're working with an athlete, if I'm working, I, I do a lot of performance stuff, high performance stuff. When I'm working with an athlete, um, we will put an athlete in an environment, in a circumstance that challenges the body above and beyond what they believe they can do. We have... We have teenagers running 28 miles per hour, right? We have performance treadmills that do 35 miles per hour. We'll put these athletes in these unweighting harnesses. So it's a safety feature. And we will, we will have them run to their max. We'll have them jump off. And then we'll up the speed of the treadmill. And we'll tell them, your body can do this speed. We'll tell them, don't. Don't we don't ask your body can do this speed now jump on and they'll jump on there and their body will do the action. They're firing the muscles, they're rewiring synaptic connections, and the nervous system is upregulating in that one moment right there. And they perform a whole new level. Now, the moment that mind is trained and the belief of the human being is is heightened, they'll do it again and again and again and again. Four minute mile. I mean, you guys know that story, right? The moment now back in the fifties, the four minute mile was was breached by an athlete. Within a month, so many other humans did the same thing, only because they believed it was possible. And so we we need to do things that we 
don't want to do and do them anyway. So we can train the brain to, t to tell the body, you got this. You got this. As Lori said, 80% is an inside job. All right. So anything you want to add before we get into the six steps, Lori? Yeah. We all, most of us in this Zoom room have these. Not everyone, because I've been inviting a lot of, of general public people as of late so that they might get interested in our technology. But oops, I'm just all wound up here tonight, raising hands, dropping things. Okay. Anyway, this little device has a Healy coaching module in it. And if you are going to set an intention for the year, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to use that Healy coaching module because it's going to help you find the blocks that are in the way. Why are you going to want to find the blocks that are in the way? Because 90 to 98% of the time you're reacting based upon those programs. And those programs, many of them are from your parents, grandparents, ancestors, past lives, stuff that isn't necessarily relevant to right now. So just like you carry that physical DNA from your ancestors, you carry this epigenetic emotional DNA, and that is going to get in the way. Why do I tell you this right now? Because some of the stuff Ken's going to ask you to do, your brain's going to go, hell no, uh-uh, not happening. <laughs> so I really want you to get the blocks out of the way, or you definitely won't want to do some of this stuff. Okay, Ken, I, pre I prepped them for you. <laughs> well, well, part of the understanding, remember we said um, 800,000 cells per second, and there's, you know, 86,400 seconds in a day, equating to roughly around 69 billion cells changing. Now, um, if you do the math, we get, uh, and we have a hundred trillion cells in these bodies. Okay. If you do the math, it's still going to take over a thousand days to shift all of those cells into the new state of being. A thousand days. However, 80-20 rule, right? 80-20 rule. <laughs> we can get 80% of the body on board uh, in, in, in roughly around 90 days, right? We can get 80% of the body on board. It's a brand new body. Here's the key. The moment we start implementing certain things, we know what we do want to create. We know what we don't want to create. And we stay within the parameters of do and not don't. Um, at the same time, we're leaning in to those things we don't want to do, but do them anyway, because those are beneficial to that to that new goal. Uh, and we start to build the willpower. It gets easier and easier. And remember what I said: the the to grow that the ACC part of the brain, it requires us to do things we don't want to do, but do them anyway. Now let's. Oops. He froze. Okay. There are all kinds of weather patterns going on. So maybe he'll hop off and, and hop back on. Um, so while we're waiting for him to do that, I want to tell you about a little technique that I've learned just recently. It's called having. H-A-V-I-N-G. And there's a book that I'm going to recommend that you guys check out as well called The Having. And the, the gist of this is there's a woman who's a journalist whose father asks her to promise him that she'll get rich. He was raised in object poverty, just absolute object poverty. And, and it, it impacted his whole life until his dying days where he has pancreatic cancer. And he's, even though he's become rich himself, he's still acting poor. He's insisting that he stay in a ward with six other people because he's gonna save $10 a day. So as he's trying to still save this money, he's asking his daughter to become rich in a way that won't take her youth away 
So to do it, to do it quickly and to then enjoy it. And so she goes out because she's a, a journalist and she finds the guru, the guru to the richest people in the world, the guru to the richest people in the world. And she interviews her and I'm only eight or nine chapters in. So don't quote me on, on all of this, but, or I can't tell you the whole story, I should say, because I just haven't read the whole story yet. But the, the gist of it is that you have to get into that energy of how you're going to be feeling and really, really experience it. Like if you're going to go to the store and you're going to buy an expensive iPhone, hmm. don't you don't want to be going in and being like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm spending all this money. Oh, I really can't afford this. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this because that energy is not going to attract more money. But if you go to the store and go, I am so grateful that I have a fabulous car that I was able to get here so easily. I am so grateful that I have the mind to know the technology like Ken gets the, the biggest freaking hard drive that they make on these things, pays $1,500 for a phone. And he's doing it happily because he knows it's going to help him do the work he needs to do in the world. And he's so grateful for that. Well, when you're in that energy of having... Mm -hmm. you can then attract more and she was asked how long is it going to take for me to get rich and she mm -hmm. said exactly what we're telling you here tonight anywhere from two weeks to three months two weeks to three months you can shift this stuff if you are diligent and you use your healing coaching module sorry about that guys i took a little uh something i took a little trip <laughs> i don't know where i went but I'm back. Um, so I I love what you you know I I like the story you're talking about the 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 devices or whatever we have. But these are these are tools, right? They're just tools. Um, the, the amount we spend on that kind of stuff is yeah, you know, it's a tool. So um, so if we are asking these these amazing questions um about how we're going to change, <clears throat> um. The last part that I want to cover is, um, if it's okay, Lori, were you in the middle of anything else? Oh, you're good. Okay. The last part I want to cover is basically six very distinct steps uh, that, that build a vessel, a body, that promotes a body um, to, to be where you want to go, to get you where you want to go. Um. And these systems, I mean, they're they. I'm going to tell you all these things, and they're completely free. Now, I know when sometimes sometimes when things are free, we don't put any value in it. But that's this. These things are free, and if you use them, they're going to be the highest return on your investment um, for manifesting, creating, changing, and improving your health. Um, but some of you guys already know these. I'm going to put them in a, a certain sequence and. Um, and then give you some more information about why, because information leads to transformation, right? So number one, learn how to breathe. Folks, I we talked about the solar plexus a little bit ago, about this the will, and but I don't know that everybody really knows how to breathe. If we understand, if you touch your collarbone, uh, you know, touch the collarbone and then the very bottom rib um, within your chest cavity, that's the size of one lung, okay? You've got two of them in there. Most often, people breathe at the very top half, just a little bit, just chest breathing, <laughs> right? To fully breathe requires more time. <laughs> it also shifts your vagal tone, um, moves you from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic, right? Moves you into the new nervous state. But I want to show you, and I want to talk to you about a very distinct breathing pattern, um, because we're going to we're going to oxygenate the body by carbon dioxide overdose, <laughs> and, and there's, I'm going to tell you why. All right, so there, there's a breath process. I didn't I didn't invent this. This is a Wim Hof process, um, but it's it's got a lot of valid um, data and contribution. And this is simply, basically, it's like an eight-minute practice. All of this, I'm going to give you this whole practice that you can do within probably 20 minutes 
of the morning of your day. It's not going to stop you from your meditation, your prayer, your journaling, any of the other processes that you already do. This is something you can do and re-kickstart your body. So eight minutes. Um, the, the way this works is there's three rounds of 30 deep breaths. Now, when I say deep breaths, they're deep and fast, deep and fast. And this is how they look. I don't care if it's in and out of your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. I don't care. The goal is we're going to increase carbon dioxide in your bloodstream. So 30 of them. And on the last one, hold. Suck it in and hold. Suck it in and hold. And hold. And hold. And hold. Until you think you're going to pass out. And then hold a little longer. And what's happening is when you think you're going to pass out or when your body starts to panic, I promise you it will. I promise you it will. Because that's the brain saying I'm going to die. <laughs> and the reason it's saying I'm going to die is because of carbon dioxide buildup. But we want that. The better you get at building tolerance to carbon dioxide, the more carbon dioxide you can build up. And then the, as, as you suck in another breath, that very next breath, after you've raised the carbon dioxide as far as you can, and you <laughs> suck in air, you just hyper-oxygenated blood cells, all right? Because they're ready. The, re the cell receptor sites are just, are just transfixed with carbon dioxide, <laughs> right? And the moment you take that breath in, wham, you hit them with oxygen molecules like crazy. And here's the benefit of this, folks. The benefit of this is it shifts your pH. Right? It literally changes your pH of your body. Um, this this hyper um, oxygenation of the tissue, um, it it starts to change this tissue system in our body. It makes it healthier, right? Um, and just basically, just eight minutes of this, it'll, it'll it'll first of all, it'll elevate your mood, right? Because the brain is also also getting higher concentrations of oxygen, right? It's going to elevate your mood, improve your emotional state, and and a highly oxygenated body is 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 highly inhospitable to disease. Inhospitable to disease. The onset of almost every disease, no, not almost, all diseases is a lowering of oxygen content or the inability for cells to transfer and utilize oxygen. That's just where disease starts to become um, highly um, highly relevant in the body. But this one exercise right here, all of a sudden makes the body very inhospitable for disease. Okay, make sense? All right, we're, we're shifting pH levels. Um, we're changing a lot of things about us, this body. Now, number two, number two, sunlight exposure. Again, free. <laughs> well, kind of hard if you're in Wisconsin right now or in Washington right now. Not so hard maybe if you're in Maui, but hey, the point is um, sun exposure. If, you, if it's a cloudy day, okay, whatever. They're not every day. They're not every day. And not, not just any sun exposure, but first light. First light, folks. 40, the first 45 minutes of light. And the reason I say that is because that we're going we're gonna to use this light in two ways. One, to absorb into the skin. And two, to look at with the eyes. How many of you guys have heard of sun gazing? Right? Okay. So the first 45 minutes of, of sunrise, there's no UVA and no UVB in that sun ray. So it's not harmful. Now, it, there's two points of the circadian rhythm which, in which this happens. The first 45 minutes and the last 45 minutes of the day. Okay, so you if you can't get up for sunrise, okay, go for sunset. <laughs> okay, all right. But first light has, um, its, its purpose is very special light because when you bring it through the optic nerve, it shifts about 400 systems in your body. It starts to change um, melatonin and the cortisol influence. Melatonin starts to downregulate, cortisol starts to upregulate. So your sleep and wake states are starting to transfer. This is important. This is important because that's where you build your alert state, your aware state, right? You downregulate brain fog. <laughs> you upregulate cognitive skill. Okay. That's just, that's what happens. So this is the first 45 minutes, um, regulating hormones, all kinds of great stuff. 
Number three, grounding or earthing. Again, free, yeah? What if you're somewhere where you can't touch the ground, right? It's winter time. Maybe you live in a very metropolitan area. I, you know what? Even if you live in a big city, there is probably dirt somewhere <laughs> connected to earth, right? A park, uh, an area where there's some kind of ground. Um, and by earthing, I'm talking about getting onto the soil, the, the grass, the sand, right? Um, putting your bare skin against the earth. This is the ultimate. This is the ultimate. Um, and the more surface area of bare skin against the earth, the faster the process. So, hey, get naked, hang out on the beach. I don't care. Whatever. Um, but the more skin you put on the ground, the better. You can do it by just standing, uh, walking on your on the grass. How, how many? Okay, when was the last time you put your bare feet on the ground? When was the last time? Was it today? Just now? Earlier? Last week? <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, the bare feet. It's weird. all the time. See, if you're doing it all the time, awesome. That's very, very beneficial. Uh, and there's a reason for this. Again, um, when we when we discharge these bodies, we balance the pH in our body. We balance the pH. Again, another way of promoting health. And we know it starts to bring this body into a more alkali state. What's alkali state? Alkali state, again, another very inhospitable state of being for cancer. Cancer cannot survive in an alkali body. It doesn't. It can't. So, and, and pH um, is a very ne necessary um, component when we're trying to gauge some of um, the, the health of our body, right? It, it stands for potential hydrogen, by the way. And hydrogen is the smallest of building blocks. It's the first thing on the periodic table. It is in, it penetrates the mitochondria of the cell, right? It's the, it's the, it's a spark. It's an energy source. Um, it is an amazing, um, antioxidant. Um, it does a ton of reverse aging components. Um, and it's abundant. It's extremely abundant. It's in the water we drink. It's in the air we breathe. We can increase the concentrations of hydrogen in water through specific mechanical processes, right? We can, we can infuse hydrogen in water. We can drink that water. Um, there's so many things that we can do. And I'm telling you the benefits of hydrogen, whether it's in the water or you're taking tablets. Now, you, you know, hydrogen is hard to contain. And so um, because it's such a small molecule, it's really hard to contain. We want to make sure that that whatever we're using has proper containment methods. But the point is, is that the better that we up our hydrogen, the better we balance our pH and the body becomes in a disease-free state. How you how would you like that, <laughs> right? Okay. And this can be obtained by grounding um, or, or earthing. Now, if you if you don't have, I I have, I'm in the winter here. I have um, an amazing set of um, uh, grounding sheets on my bed, right? And um, there's lots of different grounding sheets out there. Um, I I think mine were somewhere around 120, 130 bucks um, for a queen size, but it's a fitted sheet, um, and it connects via an electrical wire into the circuitry of your house. Now. The significance of that is, is that all of the house's standard wiring protocol is that your house be earth grounded and the electrical system be earth grounded. So if you're not sure if your house is earth grounded, there are devices you can plug into the outlet that set, that tells you it's just a little tiny, very inexpensive. I don't know. They might be 10 bucks or less that you can plug into the outlet and it'll tell you by the color of green or red lights um, whether your outlet is grounded and the polarity, if it's wired properly. And then when you know it's grounded, then the probe from your sheets, the wire, plugs into, and how many of you guys have looked at your outlet and you see that there's two parallel um, prongs and one round one at the bottom, right? The round one at the bottom is the ground. Don't stick anything in the other two. Never <laughs> do that. But the but the, the grounding sheets will only have a pin that plugs into the right port. So you can't mess it up. <laughs> okay. 
But the point is, is that bottom pin, the round one, is the grounding port of your outlet, your AC outlet in your house that is earth ground. Um, you know, you're not going to get the same magnetic field influence because the earth, by, by earthing, you get a magnetic balancing of the earth as well as the discharging of the free radicals. But the discharging of free radicals is still a huge asset in terms of pH balance. Okay. Makes sense. All right. That's number three. Um, and these are what we're, we're just doing this stuff to become superhumans guys, right? All free stuff. Number three, number four, number four. Um, these are, you guys have heard some of this too, because of my um, self-care protocol. Number four is movement, movement, right? The, the heart is the pump for our blood, but what, literally cleanses his bodies is our lymphatic system and that fluid doesn't have a pump it's pumped and moved through the body by the muscular convulsions and contractions and motion and so when i say movement i'm not talking about just standing here and moving your finger no i'm talking about a full body full range taking that arm stretching it as far as it can as high in the air and then as far as it can all the way to the ground um yoga is great um, you know, walking's good. Um, some of these other practices, I, 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 I was telling Lori, I said, you know, I used to make my child roll around the ground when they were angry <laughs> because rolling, rolling around, rolling your body left, right, rolling actually pumps that lymphatic system also, right? Why? Well, because your body weight is compressing the ground and it's pressing on those muscles and it takes effort to roll your body and it's fun. Do cartwheels, roll around, do, you know, flop around. You're not going to hurt. I mean, well, maybe, <laughs> um, but make yourself be, get into motion. I, I love that kind of process. It's fun. It's fun too. All right. And so is jumping on a mini trampoline, otherwise known as rebounding, which yep. wait for it is the most efficient form of exercise yet de designed by man. It, yeah, you're incorporating so much of this body just to bounce, just to bounce. And if you if you if you want to do this completely free and have no equipment, you can roll around. The other thing is if you just sit and and hop in place and raise the arms all the way up and all the way down, this movement starts it it literally creates this circulation with the lymphatic system. Okay, so movement is a big one. Number five is hydration. Now, I, I, these are not necessarily in any order of priority. I'm not saying that this is um, the priority list, but number five is hydration. And we've talked about this all the time. Within Healy, we know that by running the microcurrent through our body, it's using the water molecules as the conductor within our body and the minerals. So hydration, um, um, you know, some uh, minerals, um, the electrolytes, that kind of thing. Um you know, hydrogen water, if you're increasing the hydrogen content in water, again, that's another way of increasing um, the hydration within our intracellular water. Um, so hydration is a big one. And we can also add into there the nutritional component, you know, hydration, nutrition, that kind of thing come together. Um, I don't want to get into nutrition. There's, that's, there's a lot of variety there based on someone's needs. But hydration, there's a basic equation that's good for everybody. And that equation is half your body weight in ounces of water per day. That's the natural baseline equation, half your body weight in ounces. So in other words, if you're 120 pounds, that's 60 ounces of water a day. Uh, don't drink all that at, at, in the evening because then you're going to be up peeing all night, but spread it out over the entire day. That's the idea. You want to make sure you're saturating the body over an even period of time, half your body weight in ounces of water every day. If you live in a hotter climate, you're going to have to add probably more. If you're exercising, you're going to add more. If the body's carrying excess body weight, you're probably going to add more. But the point is start there, right? I mean, how many of you guys are even on that equation? Half your body weight in ounces of water every day. You know, it's important and good for you. The ones that are doing that, kudos, because that's a, that's a challenge sometimes. Right, I'm just not thirsty. Okay, well, <laughs> remember the body 
the body acclimates to what you do most of the time. <laughs> it's going to go, well, if you're not going to give me water, I'm going to hold on to it. And I'm going to call, I'm going to call it water retention. Oh my goodness. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Ready for the last one? Number six. You're going to love this one. This is my favorite, everybody. My favorite. And, and I'm going to give you deep science as to why. Number six is a cold shower or cold plunge. Okay. Now, I know you love this one. I can tell already. Remember what I said? You build the ACC of the brain by doing things you don't want to and you do them anyway. <laughs> okay. So everybody probably takes a shower, you know, daily or every now and then. Um, if you are, you're, you're lathering up, you're doing all your shower stuff, you're nice and warm, that water and that is changing the temperature in the air as well as humidity in the air of your, of your bathroom, of your shower room. And so the room is warm and cozy. So what I want you to do is I want you to do some of those Wim Hof breaths. When you're all done, you're all rinsed off, you step back, you do... Get ready. I'm all set. Okay, I'm going to do this. And you reach down and you turn the hot off. Leave the cold running. Step back. Give it a few seconds. And step in. All right. Now, I'm going to give you another little hack to make it a little simpler. You've done the breath. That's already put the body in a hyper state of awareness and preparedness. You're ready for it. The body is ready for it. Now, the only thing that's in the way is your mind so far. Right? <laughs> So the next thing you do is you rub that cold water, rub the water and give yourself, and I'm talking about, you see what I'm doing? I'm going to give myself a hug. You see that? Because by doing that, you're comforting this vessel that's in shock right now. <laughs> okay. But there's a huge benefit to this shock therapy. You're giving the rub, you're rubbing the cold water on yourself. I even rub it on my head because I got an awesome area, surface area there. <laughs> But uh, you're rubbing it around, rubbing it on the torso. You're going and you want to do this for like a minute. Now, you might want to set a timer because five seconds seems like a minute um, at first, at first. Um, but if you're not sure if it's a minute, then keep going. So you just do this cold shower. Um, this is the way of leaning in. And, and this, what happens to the body is tremendous. It starts to activate so many of the human growth hormones within your body that all of the things you did prior, including nutrition, has a much higher bioavailability rate, okay? And you can do a cold plunge if you want. That's another one. Um, but, you know, the convenience, I'm trying to do things that are free, convenient, and take a very small period of time in the morning or, you know, in your preparations phase. So, the, the point is, is that we once upon a time as these human beings were, we were outside more. You were exposed to the elements. We as a human body were designed to be outside 85% of the time, 85% of the time. Yet we spend 95% of our time inside. Now, I don't, maybe, maybe you say, well, no, I don't, can I go to the store and I, I go to my workout and I go, yeah. You go from a covered house to a covered car to a covered workout space to a covered car back to a covered store back to a covered house. How much are you outside? <laughs> you know what I mean? So we we you know exposing the body to elements, and this is why I love living in the Pacific Northwest because we have seasons, and a body that's exposed to multiple seasons has to acclimate, doesn't it? Remember, right? 97% of the gene is adaptive, reading the environment. So it builds a hearty body, a body that is, is adaptive. And so you can kind of typically go almost anywhere and still be okay. So the, the last portion there of that cold shower, um, it really makes a big difference. And here's why. There's a quote that I, I, I love this quote um, by an amazing gentleman. He says, Aging is the aggressive pursuit of comfort. And the more aggressively we pursue comfort, the faster we age. So just take that to heart. I know when I said cold shower, how many of you guys said, no, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> I did my arms today. That was my first, my first step. I was just like, did my arms. Woohoo! But remember, 
comfort is the aggressive pursuit of aging. How many of you guys want to get younger? Stop pursuing comfort. <laughs> I just, I told you by the end of this call, you guys would be like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to hear that stuff, right? <laughs> well, that's it. Those are the six steps. Um, this is the way that we move these bodies. This is all free stuff. Um, six very disciplined steps. Um, they're, they do major things uh, in the body. And, and nature provides you know, three very major necessities, tools, the, the magnetism and the grounding of the earth, right? Oxygen from the air and light from the sun. Simple things that if we're not doing those in abundance, it's why the body's suffering. It's why they're suffering right now. You can't cheat that. You can't cheat the equation. I'm sorry. You can't take a pill to get yourself grounded, <laughs> you, right? Okay. So anyway, um, that's it. That's it. That's it. And can I okay. ask a question? Uh, Ken, when you were talking about sun gazing, um, it's the first 45 minutes, the first light, but you don't have to look at the sun, do you? You can, yes. Your your eyes, here's the thing. When when we are, the first 45 minutes of the sun is the lowest power, the lowest power. And there is an entire science all around feeding the body from the molecular structures of the photons, the photons mm -hmm. themselves. That's exactly what you're ingesting. You're ingesting actual photons. The uh, The lens of the eyes is it's, it can handle that light there. Now, do not do this at midday. No. The reason that I say the first 45 minutes and the last 45 minutes is because the sun is the furthest away from you, wherever you are on the planet. It's the furthest away from you because it's just coming up over the curvature of the earth, right? Way over there. And so it's the furthest away. It's the lowest power. Um, and at, at first, you're not going to be, uh, no matter what you do differently, um, you're not going to be acclimated at first. And do do like 10 seconds, 10 seconds. I'm not saying to sit there for eight minutes or or because it's 45 minutes coming up in the day. Just do eight, just do 10 seconds. Um, the, the key is to have that sun on our body at the same time, right? Oh, the wow. moment, the moment you wake up and your eyes perceive natural light, those systems start to sway anyway, right? Without you even looking at the sun, because how many of you guys know approximately what time it is all the time? I don't care. Yeah. I, you know, it's like when you're driving around and you've been up for hours and you know, it's right around two o'clock, you know, it's right around two o'clock, you know, about what time it is, no matter where you are in your day. And so does your body. And so does your body. And it's gets its perception, its information from the optic nerve. So I'm not saying you have to stare at the sun for 45 minutes. Nope. 10 seconds. If you can't do it at all. Okay. That's okay. Um, I do this practice of sun gazing when I do walking meditations. It's a sunrise walking meditation. By the time the meditation is over and you open your eyes, it's sunrise. I try to time it just about right. I open my eyes and there's the sunrise and it's right there triggering all kinds of stuff. I'm already in a, in a state of creation. Um, I'm already I'm already the future self. <laughs> and it's like, boom, you know? So- so at the end of the day, uh, the sun is going down or it's already down and you're seeing that wonderful golden hour. Is that the same light? You want to try, try just before that sun goes down. Just there's a little okay. there's a, on nice the horizon. Little, yep. There's a nice little half moon on the horizon somewhere. You know, there's a okay. little bit, a little bit left. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And if you can't get the sunlight, because it's like gray for weeks on end, like it can be in Wisconsin, 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3 with K2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we're going to supplement, um, because again, I, I you know, it, the wintertime, certain areas of the earth, we're not getting the sunlight on the skin. So the body can build its own vitamin D. It just needs the, it needs the charger, which is the sun. So supplementation is okay. It's good. I, I don't, I, I advocate for supplementation all the time. 
And, um, you know, so, so D three K two, um, is a great combination of vitamin, uh, vitamins that help to the body uptake that. Um, I think one of these sessions, maybe, maybe next month we'll talk about, um, the genome, the human genome, because we'll want to talk about some things on how, um, you know, methylation has a big process of how our body, yeah. um, does certain things. We'll, we'll, we'll look on that at that and plan that one coming up. But, um, cause we're, we're, some of the things that I'm doing now is working in genetic expression, the analytics, um, creating very specific signatures for each individual human, um, and some of the science that we've got and we're pairing up with right now, watch out because we're going to, we're going to be able to do some super awesome stuff. And I get to, I get to share it with all you guys. I can't. So Ken, so is the sunlight any other time of day? Not good. Not good. Don't look. Well, it's not, it's not that it's not good. It's not good to look at. I mean, right. it, it's not good to look at. You can, you can be in it, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of information out there about sunblocks and sun radiation, all that kind of stuff. And I'm telling right. you, I'm telling you when you build a body that is designed for your environment, then it's going to be able to handle its environment <laughs> without the yeah. chemistry of. Cause, yeah. Cause here in Vegas, I am in a little more sun with the work that I do. So, but yep. it's not like crack of dawn or, you know, late evening. So. Yeah. Okay. And, and the key thing there is there are certain fruits and vegetables out there that grow in the most harsh of conditions. Now, when we ingest them as humans, we, we take on their properties like an adaptogen. So there's a one that's a, a fruit. Well, it's fruit. Um, tomatoes, where are they grown? Right. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not talking about some of the tomatoes you find in the grocery stores that are uh, under these. Light. No, I'm talking about you go out off of the vine and you pick an organic tomato and you just eat it like an apple. Oh, my God. I mean, and, and when that's a regular practice, your body starts to take on the properties, the protective properties that that the that the tomato naturally has. Nature builds everything we need, folks. You are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yep. All right, guys. Absolutely. So one last thing. I know we talk about the Healy Coaching Module, and I am the first to admit it's complicated. It's complex. It's not easy to figure out. Nor is it necessarily easy to do all this and make all these shifts and changes. So many of you know, I have a six, six month group coaching program and I have had a lot of people tell me they just don't want to invest six months. So I, I've created, wait for it, the Art of Manifesting Joy, six week group coaching program. You can get this done in 90 days and it's not free. However, if you sign up for it in the next 72 hours, because you're part of this community, you get it for half price. Yay. So love to do it for free, but my landlord still makes me pay their rent. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> hey, you know what? I want to, I love that idea um, of taking a fast track, right? Taking a fast track. Um, we just did uh, uh, this. Some of the things I told you, this is a fast track. So we need to, we, we need to work on the psychology, the biology and the spiritual self of us. Um, but I love, <laughs> I love Lindsay's question here. How do we deal with lack of ambition at 76 years old? I love your question. I love your question because ambition has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ambition. Ambition has nothing to do with it. Desire has everything to do with it. Desire something. And I promise you, your body will follow your heart. I promise you. The moment we lose desire will be the moment we just curl up and die okay so biohack the programs biohack the old programs out of the way that's the key that's what this coaching module does it biohacks the old crap out of the way i feel you Lindsay. i feel you because what happens to us over time you know the the richest 
demographic of humanity is our retired community. The most the the wealth of contribution to our world comes from our elderly, from 50 years old and older. Because that's the wisdom in our world. That's where the wisdom of our world lies. However, society has gotten so upside down with and and retirement. I I told I don't know how long I said this when I was so I was young. I said, you know what? Holy crap, we should retire until we're 70 and then work to death. Right? I mean, it's backwards. Holy crap. Let's let's put these bodies that we have in our vitality and young to use exploring. And then eh, or you know, we feel like maybe we're used up, then let's no. I don't believe that the equation anymore at any age. My uh, my intention has been um is to build vitality at any age. And the way that we do that is through this heart. Is through this heart. When 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 this heart has a passion, has a desire, it will drive everything. It will stop at nothing. And don't think that the heart is timid. Don't think that love is soft. No, it's fierce. It is fierce, right? When you're in love with life, trust me, life loves you back. And and what happens to this body is a marriage of Ooh. I feel it. <clears throat> it is a marriage of this human form with the force of life. It starts to love you back. Right? So all you guys are wanting to maybe make a change in life. Um, this change will be haphazard. It will be just lackadaisical unless it has some desire attached to it. Um, quite important to have that component. Um, the coaching module and what Lori does, I believe, wow. believe me, she, she can help move you into a state of being that finds your desire again. It's so easy to get caught up in the minutia and the dogma of this world's perception of you and forget your divinity. We are connected to source, ladies and gentlemen. We are the vessels. We are a conduit to source. Source is the intelligence that keeps every cell alive, and we're connected to it. Don't lose that by feeling unworthy or that you don't serve this world. Every one of you is highly important. You are the key to the universe. Every single one of you. All right? So here's your magic wand. Get out there and make some magic. <laughs> well, let's create a magic wand. You Write guys are down. phenomenal. Write it down. This is the magic wand. Write it down. <laughs> yes. Write Ready, your learn all down. It's the How do you learn it all? Woo! <laughs> Review. Woo! Remember what I said. You learn something today. If you don't practice it tomorrow, half of what you learn, the synaptic connections gets pruned away. So please work on your rehearsal. You're worth it. This is your life. This is your creation. These bodies are your vessel. Um, so let's empower them. I love you guys. I got to run. Yes. Woo. We love you guys so much. It's an honor and a privilege and a pleasure. Ken and I love doing these for you and with you. And we can't wait to see you again on, wait for it, February 12th. Yay. We Just love you. Thank you so very much. You guys are precious. Thank you. Love, love you, love you, love you. you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next Precious week. is Precious is the word. I mean... Oh. Can you come to Maui? I'll, uh, you can stay at my house, you and Laurie, please. Yes. I'll come. <laughs> I'll come to Maui. <laughs> I'm, Let's do it. Uh, Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's retreat. put something together, Laura. 
Monday night magic retreat in Maui. You see, I'm not a builder. I'm not a builder, but I'm a giver. And we could okay. do it from Maui, and then it would be perfect. All right. Let's stay at my house. Thank you. All right, everybody. So okay, love Good night. Love you. Bye. Good night. Love, love you. Bye. 2024 Lindsay. goal. Okay. Love you. Damn it. Woo. Bye, guys. <laughs>